looking at the possibility of giving neoadjuvant therapy to HER2 positive patients without chemotherapy, because there's been a lot of promise both preclinically and clinically giving dual HER2 targeted therapy to enhance the response to HER2 positive tumors. This has been demonstrated with both trastuzumab in combination with lapatinib as well as trastuzumab in combination with pertuzumab. Um, so this group had previously done a phase two study of giving lapatinib plus trastuzumab um, together in a neoadjuvant setting um, and then giving endocrine therapy for the ER positive patients. And based on that phase two study, it appeared that the HER2 negative patients had a higher pathological CR than the ER positive patients. Um, so they did a, this, the current study, they did a 12 week versus 24 week to see if longer therapy was important. And it turned out that uh, longer therapy was important, uh, 24 weeks versus 12 weeks, but it really didn't isolate out anything other than time. Um, and to me, my interpretation of the study is that ER positive tumors, whether they're HER2 negative or HER2 positive, benefit from endocrine therapy, and endocrine therapy needs to be longer. Um, the, what's not clear is whether this has any evidence that it affects disease for your overall survival, because it's a neoadjuvant short-term study. And it's not clear whether giving endocrine therapy after surgery has the same impact as giving it before and after surgery. So while I think biologically is interesting and would support, again, the hypothesis that estrogen receptor needs to be blocked as well, um, I don't think, again, that this is necessarily practice changing. For those patients for whom one cannot give chemotherapy, it really offers an opportunity to give a non-chemotherapy biologically targeted regimen.